Let's take a look at the new preset management system that's built into the Looper V2 firmware. Uh, this will be a, a shorter tutorial video that's looking at how to access and curate presets uh, on a looper that's, that's running the new, the new update. Um, I'll have a link down below that's to the full feature length overview video um, for the looper v2 that is uh, a lot more detailed. It, uh, it'll, it gets into each of the presets one at a time and looks at the features functionality and uh, it's got lots of sound examples. So this video will be a bit more on the technical side. So in a nutshell, there's been a complete overhaul with the core audio engine of the of the Looper. Uh, lots of new features have been added, uh, and we've curated these as a as a series of presets. Uh, there are actually ten factory presets that are built in by default, uh, and these can all be customized, you know, modified, and shared. Even uh, the format they take is uh, a basic text file, so the whole system is very accessible and really easy to get in and customize. Uh, yeah, there are lots of new parameters under the hood that can be tweaked that make up the, the various presets. Um, but uh, we did manage to contain that to just 10 as a starting point. So at any time, uh, there are two presets that can be accessible on the fly uh, on a single looper. Uh, this means that between the two decks, you can have completely contrasting or complementary features uh, implemented, but you can then flip, flip between, uh, depending on what you need uh, per patch. So. The two presets that are available are referred to as A and B, uh, and to change between them, you press and hold both retrig buttons at the top of the looper, and you tap the erase button on the deck that you want to toggle. So you can see the record LED button is, is flashing when I make this switch. So when it flashes white, that's it gone to preset A. When it flashes the yellow white, off white color, uh, that's B. So that's both retrig buttons and tapping arrays. So that's A, that's B, that's A, and that's B. By default, the tape looper preset is assigned to A and the clean preset is assigned to B. Okay, so that's the more top level interface stuff done. Uh, let's take a look at how to change things up a bit. Uh, the USB drive uh, it actually takes on a bit more of a prominent role in the, the V2 firmware. Um, so it actually serves as a means of working a bit more dynamically with audio samples um, and it's also the, the method of changing up and hot swapping what presets are assigned to A and B. Uh, so let's take a look at what's on this USB drive. Uh, so as you can see there are three folders. We've got firmware, presets and samples. Uh, the firmware folder, this is simply just used for performing firmware updates, um, but you can actually also look in there and just see at any time what firmware version is running on your looper. Uh, the samples folder, uh, this has got 13 folders in it, uh, and these are all used for the uh, audio sample loading and saving mechanics. Um, uh, yeah, we're most interested in the presets folder. So you can see there's a multitude of text files in here. Uh, there are 10 of them are the factory preset files and there's an 11th one which is the preset loader file. So this is the important one, this is how you, you make changes. Uh, so these are all just standard plain text files, .txt files, uh, so they can be opened up and edited with any basic text editor program. Uh, I'm just going to preview this to begin with so we can have a look at what's in it. This section here, you can see in the curly brackets, uh, this is where the definition's made. So you can see tape looper, that's in quotation marks, so that's assigned to preset A. Clean in quotation marks, that's assigned to preset B. It's these sections that you just replace with whatever preset you want, and you just use the name of the the actual text file, preset file, uh, and that will declare which one gets loaded into the A slot and the B slot. So there's a trick I've been using which has proven to be quite helpful. Um, the first thing that I do is I make a copy of the preset loader file, uh, so I'll just drag that to the desktop, and then any changes I'm making to what presets where I do to that specific file, and I'll then copy that back onto the USB drive. Um, it's a bit of an extra step, but there's there are a couple of benefits to this. So say, for example, I have a big system patched up and I've got a USB drive assigned to a looper. Uh, chances are I'm going to completely forget what presets assigned where. So this way I can just revert back to my desktop, preview that file and I can see oh that's tape looper on preset A and that's clean on B. Uh, so save me having to unmount the drive, view it on a computer and then put it back in the system. Um, yeah it's a bit more a quick reference. Uh, the second benefit is there can sometimes be some permissions issues with removable drives. 
um, and depending on what operating system you're on. Uh, so for example, here I'm using Mac, where the default text editor program, if I were to open this up within the drive, make a change, save it, close it, uh, text edit is automatically going to create a duplicate. That's uh, like a backup clone of the previous version of the file, um, which is fine, but it, it just means that you end up with uh, a huge number of backup clone files that you don't necessarily need. Uh, so this way, if I make a modification to my desktop file, I can change that out, copy that in, and it will just replace replace the one that's on the drive. Uh, and so it means does that quickly, and I've got a, a backup reference that I can I can check what presets assigned where. So the real flexibility that comes with this method of working with presets is there's not really a, a limit to how many presets you can have on hand for even within a single performance. Um, so let's say I've got this white USB drive is set with my default presets, tape looper and clean. Uh, if I've got an extra drive, so like uh, the second black one here, I could just hot swap, pull that out, put the black one in, change presets mid performance even, I can be hot swapping between multiple presets across different drives. So it allows you to really curate a performance setup in terms of preset management and audio samples on a single USB drive uh, without the need of power cycling a system. Okay, let's say I want to start with a blank slate. Uh, I might have gone in and modified certain default preset files, uh, but I can't remember what I changed where, and I just want to purge it, start again. Uh, the factory reset process is really simple. All you need to do is plug this into your computer, uh, delete the preset folder, uh, take it out, put it back in the looper, power cycle it, and on that first power up, it's going to respawn uh, a new preset folder and all the default text files inside it. So this actually happens on the file level as well as on the folder level. Um, so let's say I modified one of my factory preset files. Uh, let's say tape looper. Uh, and I went in and changed the crossfade durations to be a bit slower. Uh, I maybe went deeper. I maybe went into the tape emulation details and got something dialed in really specifically for a, for a context, for a patch that I'm using. Then uh, I'm definitely going to want to save that as my own preset file. Uh, so. All you need to do is change the name of that text file to anything other than the default preset name. So let's have a look. It says uh, my tape looper that I've modified. So let's uh, rename that. Let's go with loop to do. Yeah, anything other than the tape looper default. So I'll eject that. Stick that back into my looper and power cycle it. So there's now still 10 preset files in here, but the default named one is now missing. Uh, on the first power cycle, the looper is going to recognize that and it'll basically go through and just fill in the gaps. So if there are any files missing from the default 10, it will respawn them and just add them back to the directory. Let's take a look. And there we go. So we have loop to do as well as our tape looper original that's now been respawned. Uh, the USB drives that we ship with the looper are all pre-formatted to MS-DOS FAT32. Uh, this seems to be the most compatible for uh, the, the microprocessor that's running under the hood. Um, if you're formatting a new generic drive for use with the looper, you'll want to use the same format uh, as that. So uh, this is how to do it on Mac. Um, I've got it opened up in disk utility. I'll go to Arrays, uh, Format, I'm going to choose MS-DOS FAT32. Uh, I can name it to anything I want. Uh, let's go with, ah, that'll do, Arrays. Uh, this is going to erase it and remount it as a completely blank drive. Um, so I'll just eject that. Uh, so now with a blank drive, nothing on it, all I need to do is power that up once in a looper. Uh, and it's actually going to respawn the full folder structure, the default preset files, the a new tarball file that indicates what firmware version it's on. Uh, and it'll also rebuild the full folder structure of 13 folders, 12 for loading, one for saving uh, for uh, sample management on the looper. So that's now done. Let's have a look see how it's looking. 
open up the drive. Here we go. Firmware, presets, samples. Good to go. So hopefully that covers all bases. Uh, there's a lot of uh, flexibility with this preset system, as you'll, as you'll see. Um, yeah, I'll link below to the other Looper V2 videos. Uh, there's a full feature length one, which is uh, that goes through all the features and functionality of the various presets. Uh, there's also a shorter tutorial on how to perform firmware updates on the Looper. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoy.